Hello. A little bit more on sets. So the first couple sections were kind of more, I don't know, intro and and a lot of definitions and things like that. But now that we kind of got those under our belt, it's time to get, I don't know, get serious and kind of prepare for the more complicated problems that are coming in future sections. So let's see. And then, of course, there's more definitions. <laughs> Sorry. I mean, when are we going to get to a section where there's no new definitions, you know? No, it'll be coming soon. Don't worry. But um, this section is titled Venn Diagrams and Set Operations. So we're going to try to get to a point where we use Venn Diagrams to solve problems. And this section is just kind of trying to tell, explain what a Venn Diagram is and, and relate it to sets and all that stuff. But then we'll be using them later in, com in coming sections to actually solve problems. But yeah, unfortunately there are more definitions, so um, and we'll practice a lot with these problems so that the definitions become more clear. Uh, let's see, so we'll just start out uh, reading out here. A useful technique for illustrating set relationships is the Venn diagram. And it's named for English mathematician, as you guessed, his last name is Venn. That's usually how it goes, right? John Venn, who invented them to illustrate his ideas in his text on symbolic logic in 1881, which isn't really that long ago. So this is sort of, well, in the math world anyway, that's not that long ago. But it's sort of a young uh, study, I guess, something, something young in the math world which is pretty rare. Calculus is a lot older than that. Um, let's see, so then what else? A set A is disjoint. Oh, you know what? I think I messed up. I should have said, let me see. Because when you talk about disjoint, it should should talk about two sets. So I'm going to change that. It says a set A is disjoint. I'm going to add, oh, sorry, is, a, is disjoint from set B. So it should read, a set A is disjoint from set B when they have no elements in common. So if you look in set A and you look in set B, they have nothing in common, we call that disjoint sets. Um, and then a Venn diagram of disjoint sets looks like, let's see, so a Venn diagram, just to get the hang of it, it's um, it's going to be two, two circles, let's say one circle represents one set, so let's say here's set A, and I guess it's like a visual way to think of it, I don't know what set A has in it, but just imagine that all the things set A has are in the circle. And then set B, you can use the um, same color if you want, but just for fun, I'm going to use a different color. So I'm going to draw a circle for set B, and usually you draw them intersecting a little bit so that there's a little overlap. But this one, since we know set A and set B are disjoint, I'm going to draw the circle so that they don't touch. So there's a Venn diagram of, uh, um, what's it called, of disjoint sets. And usually we draw them inside of a rectangle. And in a few definitions from here, we'll see why. You know, what, yeah, why do we have... <laughs> Um, what's it called? Actually, we already seen that definition. I'm sorry, I forgot. I think we've talked about the universal set, right? The universal set is just the set that contains everything you're talking about in a specific problem. So just so you, just so we are clear, the rectangle that contains all sets that you're talking about in a Venn diagram is the universal set. So I put a little U out there um, just to show that anything in this problem is going to be somewhere in one of those circles or in this rectangle somewhere. Um, and then let's see, the next thing they want us to do is draw a Venn diagram for sets that are not disjoint. So if you're not disjoint, that means that you must have something in common, right? So that means that these things are going to intersect. I'm going to draw... Usually I didn't draw it first because we were just kind of warming up, but usually you draw the universal set first. It's a rectangle. And then I'm going to draw one set, let's say A. Here's a circle. It represents all the, all the elements that are in set A. And then I'm going to do the same thing with set B, but since they said they're not disjoint... I'm going to draw them intersecting a little bit. And I don't know, it's hard to tell how much. I mean, there's, they have some overlap, so they have something in common right there, that stuff. But um, it's hard to tell how much they should overlap, so it's, it's totally up to you how to draw it, as long as there's some overlap. And then let's see, the next thing they want, when one set is a subset of the other. So remember what that means. That means that one, you know, let's say A is entirely contained within B. So visually, that would mean that A, the circle A, is inside of circle B. So I'll draw, here's the universal set. Um, set B is going to be a big set. But since set A is a subset of it, it's going to be contained entirely within it. So I'm going to draw a circle within it like that. See, the, the previous two Venn diagrams we drew, there must be some things in A that aren't in B. But in this one, obviously everything in A is in B, since the entire circle A is contained within B. 
All right, so it's kind of just a warm up. I think the Venn diagrams, it's hard to really define it and really understand the definition. I think you understand it more just the examples that you see. So hopefully they're making a little more sense as we go, but we'll be drawing more. And then the next definition, the complement of a set, it's all the elements in the universal set that are not in the set A. Symbolically, we write A with a little uh, apostrophe kind of thing. And the Venn diagram is, let's see. So I'll draw the universal set. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Here we go. There's you. And since they're only talking about one set, set A, I'm just going to draw one circle for set A. They didn't mention B. Oops, that should be inside the rectangle, sorry. Um, they didn't mention a set B, so I'm just going to draw set A. But since they want us to, I don't know, I guess highlight um, the complement of A, which is everything outside of A, what we do is usually shade what we're talking about. So everything outside of A would be all the shading that I'm doing here. Everything outside of A but inside the universal set, that would be A complement. Which again, A complement means everything that's outside of A but inside the universal set. Alright, the next definition is talking about the intersection of two sets, which I think we've you've talked about or seen in algebra before. Um, it's, the symbol is A intersect B, like an upside down U. And the definition is of, it, of the intersection of two sets is all elements common to the two sets. So, but yeah, it's what they have in common. So actually, if I draw the Venn diagram, just like the one up here, where they're not, what is it, they're not disjoint? Let me see. And yeah, in, th in this problem, or this part, we don't really know if they're disjoint or not. So if you're not told whether they're disjoint or not, you just assume that there's something in common. So I'm going to draw A, and I'm going to draw B with a little overlap. Even though I don't know they overlap, it's just, I guess you, I don't know, if they don't say that they don't overlap, or they don't say that they're disjoint, you assume that there's something in common. And then so the intersection would be this portion they have in common right in the middle. I'm going to shade that in. That shows everyone this is what I want to talk about, the intersection. That's A intersect B, the shaded portion. All right, and then in the union, you've probably seen that before in algebra, is the set of all elements in A and all those elements in B combined. So it's like you took everything in A and put it together with everything in B. So what would that Venn diagram look like? Let's see. Um, I'm going to start it off the same. Okay, here's the universal set. And again, I use different colors, which kind of, I guess, takes a while, but you don't have to use different colors. Here's set A. Oop, I'm trying to make it look like it's in the rectangle. And then here's set B. And what I want is what they, um, not what they have in common, sorry, that was the intersection, but... Uh, I just want to put everything in A together with everything in B. So I'm going to highlight everything in A. That's part of it. But then add everything in B that I didn't get when I circled A. So that is pretty much, yeah, there's um, color in everything in A, color in everything in B. That's the union. It's put, put them together, and that's your union. All right, what else do we have? The difference of two sets, A and B. The difference of two sets, A and B, is the set of all elements in A that are not in B. Symbolically, we write A minus B, which is good, because think about what does the difference mean. It's everything that's in A, but take away everything that might have been in B. So it is kind of like you're subtracting. Um, and then the Vi Venn diagram would be, all right, it's kind of a pain because you got to set it up every time. Here's the universal set rectangle, and then A, you know. It's usually the same setup every time. You just draw a circle A. Draw circle B, again, assuming that they're intersecting at least a little bit, because no one told us otherwise. And then we're trying to highlight, okay, everything that was in A, but take away anything in B. So I would highlight everything in the circle A, but I'm going to not include the intersection, pretty much, is what we're doing here. There we go. So, uh, sorry. It kind of looks like I colored a little bit of the intersection. I didn't mean to. I should erase that. Ugh. Just to make it more clear. That guy. Nothing in the intersection there. Oh, well. Whatever. There we go. Okay. And then, sorry, there's a lot of definitions here, but the very last one is the Cartesian product of two sets A and B. Bless you. Sorry, that was my daughter sneezed. <laughs> is the set of all ordered pairs A comma B. Okay, remember, a, or, uh, ordered pair is kind of like a point, if you think of it that way. Um, where A is in the set A, and B is in the set B. So that, that kind of doesn't make a lot of sense, I think, until you see an example. Symbolically... The Cartesian product of A and B, um, let's see, yeah, and this is how you write it, the, it's like A and a little x, B, it's almost like A times B, so, and product means multiply, so I guess they, they use that notation because multiply, product, you know, that kind of thing, 
So as an example, just to illustrate it, let's say the set A has the numbers 1, 2, 3, and the set B has the numbers 3 and 4. Well, then the Cartesian product is just try to think of any ordered pair where the first or the left number comes from set A and the right number comes from set B. So since A, set A has n the number 1, 2, and 3, and set B has the numbers 3 and 4, all the possible ways you can write and something in A, comma, something in B are here. So notice we have, here's 1 from A, 2 from A, 3 from A, and then I have from set B, 3 from each for each of those. And then we move on, set A could have 1, 2, or 3, set B could have a 4 in it. So I think that's all the possible combinations of something from A and something from B put together as an ordered pair. So it's kind of kind of weird and it's almost not really useful in real life, but you know, it's, it's something that's I guess important in set theory, but we won't really use it in our class very much, just in case you see it in the homework. But one thing, notice that A cross B, or the Cartesian product of A and B, is not the same as the Cartesian product of B and A. Because if I was talking about B cross A, where B is on the left and A is on the right like this, then all these ordered pairs would be backwards. Instead of 1 comma 3, it would be 3 comma 1. Because when, it just kind of tells you which one comes first. If Here's a B, here's an A. That tells me anything in B should be on the left of the ordered pair, anything from A should be on the right of the ordered pair. Alright, so that was a lot of definitions, sorry about that. But don't, don't feel bad if as you're doing examples or homework you have to keep looking back at the definitions to remind yourself. You know, so it's hard to remember all of them, so don't worry about it. Uh, you'll get it, the more problems you try, the more it'll come, it kind of become second nature and you won't have to think about it very much. Well, let's just jump into example one. It says... The set A has the, basically the numbers 1 through 10, whole numbers, and B has the multiples of 3 up to 18. Now let's say the universal set is, let's see, all natural numbers from 1 to 20. So you know the counting numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way up to 20. And notice the universal set, it, it includes all the numbers in A and all the numbers in B. That's how the universal set should be. So first, well, I guess these aren't in any particular order, but I see at the top left, they want us to find the complement of A. So remember, that means everything that was in the universal set that was not in A. So A has the numbers 1 through 10. The universal set has the numbers 1 through 20. So what are the, what's the universal set missing that set A is, has? Or sorry, what is the set A missing that the universal set has? Well, it's the numbers 11 through 20. So A complement would be, yeah, everything that was in the universal set but was not in A. So 11 through 20. And then how about B complement? They want that too. Let me look at the universal set. What is the universal set missing? Or sorry, what does the universal set have that B is missing? Well, B doesn't have 1 and 2. It does have 3. It's missing 4 and 5. It does have 6. It's missing 7, 8. You know, and you can keep going on like this. 7, 8. It has 9. Not 10 and 11. It has 12, but not 13, 14. It has 15, but not 16, 17. It has 18, but not 19 and 20. That's a big set. So it's because B is missing a lot of stuff that the universal set has. And those, you know, those elements don't have to be in that order. As long as you, as you list them all eventually. And let's see, the next thing they want, the intersection of A and B. Remember, that's what's common to A and B. Common elements. So looking at set A and set B, I think what they have in common is 3, 6, 9. And that's about it, right? Because those are the only multiples of 3 that are in set A. And then the union of A and B, that's where you take everything in A and put it together with everything in B. So usually when I write out a union, I'll write everything in A first, or everything in the first set. What was in there? All the, everything up to 10. Huh? 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. All right, and then what, now I just have to say, well, what's in B that I missed? 3's in B, but I've already listed that. 6, 9, same thing. But B has 12, 15, and 18, and I didn't list them yet, so that would be the universal set. Or sorry, the union, the union of A and B. And yeah, those don't have to be in that order. You could have put those elements in any different order. Now we have A minus B. Remember, that means everything in A that was not in B. So I guess that means I want everything in A that's not a multiple of 3. Because that's what B contains. 1, 2, I'm not going to include 3 because that was in B. What else does A have? 4, 5, 6, but 6 was in B. I don't want that. 7, 8, same with 9, I don't want that because that was in B, and then 10. So it's, yeah, just look in the set that's on the left, A in this case, and list everything except the stuff that was in set B. And now they want the opposite, B minus A. 
So I'll kind of do the same thing. I'm going to look at set B and write everything that I see in that set that was not in A. So looking at B, the first three elements, 3, 6, 9, those are in A. That means I don't want to include those. But 12, 15, and 18, those are in set B, but they're not in set A. But that's about it. And now, the comp oh, i got to think about this. The complement of A union B. Okay, well that, it's kind of got two complicated things going on. It's got the union, which is already something I have to really think about. But then it also has the complement. So what you can do, I'm going to see, to figure out what the complement of A union B is, you can look back. I already figured out the union up here. So I can kind of use that to help me. I'm going to go draw an arrow to remind myself this is going to help me. So let's see, the complement of the union of A and B, remember complement means everything that was not in this set. All elements not in A union B. So what was in the universal set that was not in the union? Well, I can, it can help by looking at the universal set, or sorry, the union. Earlier the union contained, looks like the numbers 1 through 10 over here, and then the numbers 12, 13, or sorry, 12, 15, and 18. What numbers is it missing from the universal set? It's missing 13, 14, 16, 17, 19, 20. Those are the only numbers between 1 and 20, because those are the numbers in the universal set that are not in A union B. Okay, that looks good. Now this last one is pretty complicated too. It's the complement of A intersect the complement of B. So I think, since I already found what the complement of B was up here, and what the complement of A is over here, I can use those to help me figure out this answer. So this is the intersection of A comp or A complement and B complement. This is remember intersection means what they have in common. So I'm looking for here elements common to A complement. So I'll look in that set and B complement. I'll look in that set as well. So on the first line, what do we have there? Um, what's in A complement that was also in B complement? Let's see, A complement is all the numbers from 11 to 20. What's in there that's also in B complement? Looks like 11's in B complement, 13, 14, 16, 17, 19, 20. So I'm, again, I'm just looking at the, the sets that I've highlighted in blue, A complement and B complement, and trying to figure out what they have in common. And that's about it. So it's, a lot of times when you have something complicated you're looking for, you can look at simpler sets to help you. All right, I think that was a good, you know, practice. It kind of got us ready. So example two, now we want to draw Venn diagrams. And this is kind of interesting because we talk about Venn diagrams where set A is a certain thing. Uh-oh, I should, you know what, I should use the same colors, huh? I'm sorry. What we, earlier we were doing A was blue in the Venn diagrams. And A contains one through five. And B was two, four, six, eight. All right, well, I'm going to start it out the same way. I'm going to draw the universal set as a rectangle. Or a square, whatever, it doesn't matter. Just as long as it contains both set A and set B. I'm going to draw a circle for set A. It doesn't really matter how big it is, it's just a visual. And then set B. Assume they intersect a little bit, unless you're told otherwise. Um, and it de they definitely intersect because notice in set A and set B there are a few things in common, like what? Um, two is in set A, it's also in set B. Four is in both sets. So actually those two are what's going to go right in the middle in the intersection. I think that's all they have in common, so I'm going to draw those numbers, ah, 2 and 4. And they don't have to be in that order. You could have put 2 on the left or on the right, whatever, as long as they're in the intersection somewhere. And then, let's see, in this area here, that's in set A, but not in set B. What was, what was in set A that I did not see in set B? 1, 3, and 5. And, I, you know, I kind of arranged those in a weird kind of triangle, but as long as they're in there somewhere, it doesn't matter what order they're in or where where in that little area they are. And then in here, the part of B that's not part of A, I'm going to put 6 and 8, because those are the only numbers that were in B that were not in A. And that's about it. I mean, some, there are some problems we'll see in future sections where there, there are elements that'll go outside of both circles. They'll be in the rectangle U in the universal set, but they won't be in set A or set B. But this problem, I don't even know what the universal set is. They haven't said, so I'm just going to stop there and you know move on. Part B. Now this one's complicated because there's three sets here, A, B, and C. So I might want to make a universal set that's really big so I have plenty of room for all three sets. Alright, and then maybe I'll color code again. Set A is blue. Let me draw a little circle for set A. 
Well, not little. Kind of big because you want to write stuff in it. And then set B we've been doing in red, huh? Set B. But I'm trying to save room because I want to put a set C there too. Um, guess what color? Uh, would it be confusing if I use green again? Yeah, maybe. I think I have a gray. Let, let's see. Ah. All right, set C. I'm going to draw. Oop, here we go. Whee. All right, this is very complicated looking. Um, but let's see. Um, I think the best way to go, and we'll see this in coming sections, is as you're filling things in a Venn diagram, you want to start in the very middle. So this little, I don't know what do you call that, a little triangle looking shape. Try to fill that in first. And that would be, notice that's the part of this diagram that's part of A, part of B, and part of C. So I'm going to look in A, B, and C and, and look to see if they have anything in common. So are there any elements that all three sets have? Let's see, set A has red, orange, yellow, green. Set B has yellow, orange, blue. And set C has blue, orange, pink. I think orange is the only thing that's in all three sets. Is that true? Like, for example, yellow is in set A and B, but not in set C. So that wouldn't go in the middle. I think orange is the only one. Okay, so I'm going to write that word. Yeah, this time it's a word, which is kind of weird. I'll write it there if I have room. Uh, orange. There we go. And that one's done. So I'm, sometimes I like to cross it out so I don't have to write it twice. All right. And then we're going to try to, from there, work our way out. Let's see. What else? What other areas of this diagram do I have? Let's say this area, for example. That's kind of the next outer portion. That's what A and B have in common, but C doesn't have in common. Because I've already filled in what C has in common. It was orange. So now I'm going to look at sets A and B and C. Other than orange, do they have anything in common? Yeah, yellow, right? I think that's about right. Okay, so I'll write the word yellow in there. If there was another element, I'd write both, but uh oh I wouldn't have room, so it's a good thing there's only one. Yellow. All right. And again, I'm trying to work my way out, so I might go now to one of these other outer pieces right here, like this guy, for example. Sets, that's what set B and C have in common, but set A does not. So what's in set B and set C, other than orange and yellow, because I've already filled those in. They have blue in common, right? Blue? I think that's it. Okay, so I'll write the word blue in that area. Blue. And I should, like I said before, I should be crossing off everything I've already written in the diagram, so I don't have to worry about it. Alright, now again, I'm working my way out, so what's left? I have this area here. That's what A and C have in common, but B does not have any, you know, in common. But when I look at A and C, I don't see anything else that's in common. Now, since I've already written orange, yellow, and blue, all that A has left is red and green, and all that C has left is pink and purple. They have nothing in common, so this, this area is going to stay blank since there's nothing in there. A and C have nothing in common that B doesn't, doesn't have. All right, now we can work our way out to another area. Um, it doesn't really matter which one, I guess. I guess I'll look at set A right here. What is this, is this area here in green that I'm highlighting? This is what's in set A, but not in set B and not in set C. And that's going to be pretty much everything that's left in set A, right? Red and green. Those are in set A, but they're not in set B or set C. I want to write those guys red and green. And then similarly, um, this area for set B, where is he? This guy should be everything that B contained, but was not in A or B. Or sorry, but was not in A or C. But in set B, I've already written everything out. Yellow, orange, and blue. It's already done. So actually, this is going to be blank as well. And you don't have to write this. I'm just writing blank. Just in case you come back later and want, you know, you're wondering on your notes, wait, did I miss something? Did I forget to put something here or what? No, that should be blank because there's nothing there. Yeah, there's nothing that was in set B that wasn't also in set C or set A. And now I can fill this guy in. What was in set C that was not in either other set? Well, it'd be pretty much what's left over there, pink and purple. I'm going to write those guys, pink, purple. There we go. And yeah, if we knew what the universal set was, there might be stuff out here that's not in A, B, or C, but we, don't, we, have, we haven't been told what the universal set is, so we're not going to even bother. But, you know, for example, there might be, might be a problem where they said, uh, the universal set is all the colors, all the colors. Man, then there'd be a lot of stuff out here, right? There's like turquoise that we didn't mention, there's aqua, and I don't know, brown, black, white, anyway. But if we don't know the universal set, we'll just stop there. All right, I think we're doing good. Let's see, example three wants us to draw a Venn diagram for the following sets. Okay, 
Let's see. So we're just going to draw a Venn diagram as normal. And then we're going to try to shade in the section that they're talking about. Well, we'll see if we can figure it out. So you know what? If I want, actually, for all part A, B, and C, I can start them out all the same way. I'm, I'm going to draw the universal set for all of them. And then the set A is some circle. The set B is another circle. I haven't been told that they're disjoint, so I'm just going to assume that they have something in common. So I'll draw them intersecting. Here's set A. All of them have set A. All right, and then we're set B. They all have a set B. Who knows how much they intersect? It's just, oh well, you do your best. All right, there we go. And then for each part, I'm just highlighting a different portion depending on what they're talking about. So let me try to reason this out. This is A intersect B complement. And sometimes you know what helps is to kind of write out what that means and try to simplify it. So this is, remember intersect means what they have in common. This is elements that are common to A and B complement. But let me see, what does B, B complement mean again? That's what's not in B. So what's in, what's common to A and something that's not in B? And not in B. Okay, so pretty much they're saying what's in A that's not in B. Hmm, well... What part of this diagram is in A, but not in B? It would be this area here. That's in A, but it's also in the complement of B, because the complement of B should should have everything that B does not have. Yeah, this area right here that I'm highlighting, it's the only portion of the diagram that's in A, but it's also in the complement of B, which means it's in A and it's not in B at the same time. So yeah, sometimes if you're confused about this uh, the set you're looking for, you can always kind of write out the... Uh, the, I don't know, the logic behind it. So in part B, this is B complement minus A. So this is elements in B complement, but not in A. And sometimes it helps to, if you have a complement in there, to kind of think of what the complement means. What are elements in B complement? What does that even mean? It means elements not in B, right? Elements not in B but, like we said before, not in A also. So where's all the stuff that's not in B and not in A? Well, it'd be everything that's outside of both circles, right? If you're not in B and you're not in A, you must be outside of both circles over here, somewhere in this rectangle and you're not in the circles. All this crud here. There we go. I think that's what we want. That's everything outside of B and outside of A. Yeah, okay. I think that sounds good. Okay, okay. And the next one, this one looks kind of complicated. It's A union B complement. So remember, complement means what's not in that set. So we want elements not in A union B. But remember, A union B, If we, we drew the Venn diagram higher up in this section, but A union B is, every, if you highlight A union B, that's everything in both circles. So if I want elements that are not in A union B, that's elements outside A and outside B. Or elements that are outside both circles, I guess you could say. Both circles. Well, it sounds like it's going to be the same diagram as the previous problem, right? I think that's what we highlighted in, in part B. So it's all this stuff outside of both circles. There we go. That's interesting. So it looks like from, as long as we drew the Venn diagrams correctly, it looks like these are the same. So that means that if you were to look for B complement minus A, that's equivalent to A union B complement. They're the same set. Even though that's, there are just two different ways to write it, I guess. B complement minus A, and then A union B complement. All right. That sounds good. So let's see. Example four, this is kind of where we're trying to go in this chapter. Let's see, it's, um, yeah, we're going to be trying to problem solve in a, in a few sections from now. So this will be a taste of what's to come. You say, okay, at Madison High School, 46 students participated in student council or instrumentals, or sorry, instrumentals, <laughs> intramurals. 30 participated in student council, 4 particip participated in student council and intramurals. How many students participated in only intramurals? Okay, so I think we're going to have to set to solve this, obviously, because we're in the chapter about sets. 
but let's let's say we give names to these things. We're talking about student council. Let's say S is the set of students in student council. And what was the other thing that they were in? Intramurals? Let's say I is the set of students in intramurals. Or you could use sets A and B. I just like to use S and I or something that represents the actual set so I don't forget which one's which. And you know what? I should have used different colors. Now let's say the set I is red. Alright. And there's only two, so I think I can. What's it called? And you know what? I'm, I'm going to draw a Venn diagram for this to help me, but you know what I should do is translate the words into symbols. So, for example, what they say? First, at the high school, 46 students participated in student council or intramural So I don't know if we've said this before, but in, um, in algebra you find out that the word or... Oh, sorry, not intersect. The word or and union are associated. So if you ever see the word or in a word problem, you're pretty sure that the union is going to be involved. That sounds funny, huh? Sounds like I'm threatening someone at work. I'm going to involve the union. No, no, no. Okay. Anyway, that was lame. But yeah, think about that. The word or is associated with in with uh, union, and the word and will be associated with intersection. That'll be really important for coming sections. But since I said 46 students participated in student council or, that means the students that were in the student council S or, which is union, intramurals is I. There were 20, 46 people in there. So I shouldn't say that this is equal to 40 or 46 because it's not like the set is equal to 46. It's the number of things in the set or the number of people. So I should say technically the number of people or the number of elements in the set is 46. And then what else did they say? 30 participated in student council. So since they only mentioned student council, it would just be the number in S is 30. And they said four, four participated in student council and intramurals. That's the intersection of the two, four. And I guess if I was given more information, I'd try to write it out in the same way. Remember this notation, though. This means the number of elements in for all these guys. And I think that will help me draw this uh, Venn diagram. And then once I draw the Venn diagram, I should be able to answer the question. Let me see. So I got the universal set out here. And then I was going to draw set A, but no, we have set S. Oh, it's not supposed to go outside the, the rectangle, but, you know, what are you going to do? And then set I. Okay. So I gotta, I'm going to try to figure out how many elements are in each part of this diagram. That'll help me out. How many elements? I, mean, I don't have to write them out, because I don't know these students' names, but I just want to know how many are in each part of this. So here in the intersection, how many are in there? Here in set S, that's not in set I. How many are in there? How many are in set I, that's not in set S? And then maybe how many are in the universal set? I might need to know that. But okay, I want to know how many elements are in each part of the Venn diagram is what I'm trying to figure out now. And one thing that's important to notice is that, um, so like in here I have the number of elements in S is 30. So you might think, well, I can fill that in right away. I know the number of elements in S. But notice that S is made up of two parts here. It's part, part of it is the intersection, so those are elements in S. But also this portion out here, that's S as well. So I know there are 30 elements in S, but I don't know how they're uh, dispersed amongst those two areas. So I can't really use that piece of information yet that I have 30 things in S. Because this plus this, whatever those numbers are, question mark plus question mark is 30. I don't know what they are. I have to know how that kind of breaks down. And that's why in, pre in the previous example, or a couple examples back, remember we said when you have a Venn diagram, you want to start in the middle and work your way out. So what I should do is try to figure out what's in this intersection portion. And thankfully I was given that. So that was here. The number of elements in the intersection is four. What I just, and you can just write that number four. You don't have to really, you know, we don't know who these students are, so I can't really say, like, Sally, Joe, Timmy, and Tommy. Those are all the people inside. I don't know who they are, but I know there are four of them, so I'll put four there. But you know what, since I know the intersection now, that means that this thing that I used to not know down here, the uh, question mark, I actually know it. So now I'm looking for what plus 4 is 30. That'll be what's in this area of S that I'm missing. So that another way to think of it is, well, the total of number of things in S is 30, but I know that four of them are in the intersection. So the remainder, 26, must be in this area here. 
Alright. And I think the only thing I'm really missing is this guy right here. What's in the eye that's not in the others? And I happen to have one more piece of information. I know that the number number of elements in the union of the two is 46. So it should be that 40... I guess, and remember the union, that's everything... Let's see. Get a different color. The union... If you do, do the Venn diagram, that's everything in both circles put together. So all the numbers in all three of these areas, the 26 plus the 4 plus this together should make 46. That means that the thing I'm missing must be 46 minus those other two numbers. 46 minus 26 minus 4, which I believe would be 16. Wait, no. 16, is that right? Yeah. So there should be 16 in there. And I think that happens to be the thing they were asking for in this problem. What did they say? How many students participated in only intramurals? That would be these people. So there's your answer, 16. And notice we had to, we actually had to go through all the parts of this problem, just or parts of the Venn diagram, just to get that answer. So those are kind of tough, but the more you try, the better you'll get. And then it'll be more important in the coming sections. Let's see. So last example here. We have A intersects A complement first in part A, and they want us to simplify that. So I think in all these parts, part A, part B, part C, part D, these are all kind of silly statements because they're all they all simplify to something very nice. So if you just reason it out, I think it'll help. What does it mean to have A intersect A complement? Well, A is all the elements in A. Intersect means common to. But what we're looking for is all. Yeah, if you kind of write it out in words, it kind of helps. All the elements common because that's what intersection means to A and A complement. But remember, what is A complement? A complement is everything not in A. So we're looking for all elements in A, because you want it to be in A, and in A complement at the same time, is pretty much what they're saying. But I think that'll be nothing, because the complement means all elements in A, and complement of A means not in A. So what are all the elements in A, but not in A? Well, nothing. There's nothing that's in A and not in A, right? There's no way to be in something but also not in something at the same time. That's crazy talk. So the answer would be empty set or the null set. There's nothing that this, that, that describes. That's crazy. This time we're talking about the union in part B. What are they saying here? The union. So remember that means you put together all elements in A, so the first set, put together with elements in the other set, which is A complement. And then the a good thing to do is try to describe what A complement is in words, and that'll kind of bring it bring it to life. All elements in A put together with okay. All elements in, in A complement means everything outside of A. All elements outside A. So if you take all elements in A, and you take all elements outside A, that's going to be everything, right? Everything. So the answer, I would, you could say everything, but universal set is the answer. Hopefully that makes sense, because imagine you take everything in A, you put it together with everything not in A, well that would be everything. So your answer would be everything in words, but universal set is the symbol, or I guess the symbolic way to say that. All right. Part C wants A union the empty set. That's all elements oops, elements in A. And union means put together. Put together with elements in the other set, empty set. But notice there's nothing in the empty set. So you're taking set A and you're putting it together with nothing. So you're just going to get set A. The empty set doesn't add anything, right? You're just taking set A, adding nothing. What do you get? Well, you get what you started with, set A. Okay, and then the last one here. A union, and that's the, the universal set. So you're going to put together all elements of A. Elements of A put together with elements in the universal set. But remember, the universal set is everything. So you're pretty much taking elements of A put together with everything. So what happens when you take a set and put it together with everything? Well, you're going to get everything. The set A was kind of silly. The answer is everything or universal set.
So I hope that was good. I hope that makes sense. Um, we'll see you in the next section. Have a good night, nice day.